Hey, I'm Dave. Welcome to my shop. Today in Dave's Garage, I'm going to show you everything you need to know in order to go from zero to hero with Platform.io for the Arduino. We'll install Platform.io and then write a simple blinking LED program, compile, test, and then upload it all to the chip as you watch. You'll see every facet of Platform.io live right now. Whether you've been using the Arduino IDE and are just curious about how hard it is to move to Platform.io, or even if you've never programmed and flashed a chip in your life before, this is the video you need to see in order to wrap your head all around it. Because I'm going to remove any mystery that remains by performing four key steps live as you watch. Specifically, I'm going to install Arduino, add ESP32 support, compile a test program, plug in and flash the chip. And then, once I know everything is working properly with Arduino itself, we'll add Platform.io to the mix. I will install Visual Studio Code, install Platform.io, compile a test program, and then plug in and flash the same chip. And to show you that none of it is difficult or complicated, I'll do all the steps for both programs live as you watch in under five minutes. Join me now as I take a brand new PC with nothing on it and do all the setup steps needed to be up and flashing microcontrollers in just a few short minutes. So the first thing we're going to want to do is bring up Google, which will allow us to search for the Arduino IDE. The top result at arduino.cc will take us directly to the download page. From here, you would think the logical choice would be the Windows Store, but in fact, we need a type of integration that apparently store apps can't do if we're going to use Platform I.O., so we need the Windows installer version. So this is the point at which most people just say, uh, just download. But to show you how easy it is, while it downloads, I'm also going to contribute. Uh, just kind of a small amount here. We'll just do 10 bucks through PayPal, which is probably the easiest. My email, my password. I'll blank those out, of course, along with my checking account information. You probably don't need that. Pay now, processing, and the download should be occurring at about the same time. There it is. Open file, and we can install. So we launch it to install the Arduino IDE. We'll scan down through the license agreement here to make sure that we read it and agree with it and understand it and that our attorneys have been consulted. And yes, they have, so I agree. Click Next, take the defaults, take the default path. We can watch it rock along for a second here. I guarantee it won't go this fast on your machine at home. Now we have to install device drivers, and these are basically so that you can communicate with the chips that you want to program. So I'm just going to say yes to each of those. With the install complete, let's load it up and open up a very basic example, the Blink example. In order to flash the code, we need to go to the Tools menu and set up what chip we'll be talking to. Except there's a problem. None of these are ESP32 at all. They're all Atmel and Uno and old stuff. Or not old, but simpler stuff. And even if we search for the board in the Boards Manager, we won't find it. We actually have to go to Preferences. And under Additional Board Manager URLs, enter this huge monstrous path, which I will provide to you in the video description in case you need it. So you don't have to try and type it from the video. So what this will do is tell it where to find the information on the ESP32. So now when we go into Boards Manager, we'll be able to search ESP. Hit Enter. There you go. ESP32. And we'll click Install. And we just let it download and do its thing. It'll take a few seconds, after which we can go in and look for ESP32. There's plenty of them. Specifically, we want the Helltech Wi-Fi Kit 32. There it is. Before we try to build, let's check the board's communication parameters. They all look pretty standard. The only thing we're going to look at really is COM port to make sure that it's pointing at the right port. COM3 is what I believe is correct on this machine. So we'll click Upload and let it rip. Let's plug the chip in, and once it powers up, if we're lucky, there we go. The tiny light built-in LED is also blinking right there. Great success. Now that we know that the Arduino IDE itself is working, we know all the right libraries and files for the ESP32 must therefore be installed. So we can proceed on to Visual Studio Code. After searching Google for Visual Studio Code, make sure the link that you find comes from Visual Studio or Microsoft.com. I'm going to use the Windows link because that's what I'm running at the moment here. And my download will come down in the bottom left. I can open it and review the license agreement to make sure that I agree with it, which, uh, yes, I do. I'll accept the agreement and proceed through the install. Taking the defaults of pretty much every turn here, the only thing is I probably do want a desktop icon just for convenience. So there's a step later on in here, right here. Create a desktop icon. I'll turn that on. 
everything else, I'm taking defaults. Once the install is complete and you launch Visual Studio Code, most of your interaction with it will take place through four or five menu buttons up on the top left here. And you can see that there are debug, source control, search, file management, and what we want, extensions, because Platform.io is simply an extension to Visual Studio Code. One common one that everybody probably needs to have too is a C++ extension, so I'm going to install that and show you how easy it is. It's already done. Um, you could restart the editor, but I'm going to go through and find Platform.io, click install for it. It will take some time, but uh, it'll churn through pretty quickly in this demo, but it did take a surprisingly long time to install on my machine. Now to make sure everything is working, I'm just going to create a simple little demo project. In fact, I'm going to wind up pasting in the exact same blink code we used before. Let's call it my first project or something similar to that. Once we've picked the project name, we need to tell what board we'll be using, which again is the Helltech. We can type in the actual letters H-E-L-T-E-C to get a partial match here, and no, that's not enough. Wi-Fi, there we go. Helltech Wi-Fi Kit 32. Pull this down so I can get at the finish button, and that should be it. It will churn away for a few seconds, and when it's done, project has been initialized. Everything on the left here, you can see include and source. Now, source is going to be the main file. We're going to just replace this with the blank code plus the include arduino.h. It will take a guess at your upload port, but you can also go into platformio.ini and set it just like this. I'm going to set mine to com3, and we'll try to do a build and upload. Turns away, compiles, should flash right away, linking. Finally, it's writing to the chip, which then is blinking away happily. If you like to tinker or work with Arduino, and you're not yet subscribed to this channel yet, be sure to do so now before you lose it. You'll also likely need to turn on the bell icon and get personal recommendations in order to actually get notified about new episodes, and I encourage you to take the moment to do so right now. I'm not selling anything, and I don't have any Patreons. I'm just in this for the subs and likes, so if you did find the video useful or interesting, please be sure to leave me a like to let me know that I'm on the right track. Thanks for joining me today for this whirlwind tour of installing and using Platform.io. If you're curious and want me to do a video on more advanced Platform.io topics like including libraries and so forth, let me know in the comments section. Until then, I'll see you next time here in Dave's Garage. This little chair will be waiting for one of you. And a rocking chair for another who likes to rock. And a big armchair for two more to curl up in. All next time on Dave's Garage.